Hi, in this video we're diving into the topic of flashcard apps. With so many options on the market, it can be tough to know which is the best fit for your study needs. So we've done the hard work for you, comparing Anki, Quizlet, Flashcard Lab, Cram, and Brainscape. We'll look into each app's user experience and learning curve, customization, space repetition study, and of course, the price to help you choose one that works for you. Just as a quick overview, all the apps function as digital flashcards as you'd expect. You can edit the material to show some prompt or question on the front of the card and then flip the card to show the answer on the back of the card. Where applicable, I'll use a rating system of 1 to 5, with 5 being great and 1 being poor, to characterize certain aspects of each app. So with that context in mind, let's get started. Let's start off by talking about the user experience and learning curve. Anki is incredibly powerful with robust features that can be tailored to your exact needs. Here, I'm showing the desktop version of the app. There is a mobile version, but I'll talk about that more later. To get started, you can make your own flashcards or download a set from Anki's website. I've already downloaded this set of math flashcards and I'll show you how to start studying them. Click on the topic. When studying, there are three buckets to the flashcards, new, learning, and to review. Click study now to begin. First, you'll be shown the front of the card and once you've tested yourself, click show answer. Next, four options will pop up with a time interval above them. This is Anki's spaced repetition system. If you don't know what spaced repetition study is, it is a way of studying that involves reviewing and recalling information at varying time intervals to maximize retention. In Anki, you feed the spaced repetition system by choosing one of these options. For example, clicking again means that this card was difficult and you need to review it as soon as possible. Clicking easy means you are very familiar with the card and it should be shown less often. That's decently simple, but to really unlock the capabilities of Anki, you need to dive deeper into its deck options. Here's where you can figure how the space repetition study works by setting things like time intervals, max cards to review per day, what happens with past due cards, etc. The terms in the options view are difficult to understand as well. There's so much functionality here that a full on manual is needed to use Anki, and you can read extensively about how to use it on the website. Browsing and editing flashcards is also somewhat daunting. Here's the interface for browsing and editing your flashcards. You can see here that there are many labels and various ways to display the flashcards. You can get as creative and complicated as you want. Keep in mind this is just a very superficial look at Anki. There is so much more to the software that I've shown from using HTML and CSS to create the cards to adding extensions to enhance your studying. For this reason, I'm ranking Anki a 1 out of 5 for user experience as it has a steep learning curve and a user interface that is difficult to use. Moving on to Quizlet. Quizlet's interface is very user-friendly and intuitive, making it great for beginners. It is on the opposite end of the spectrum compared to Anki. Here's what the interface looks like. Click the card to flip it. Navigate using the left and right buttons or just by using your keyboard arrow keys. You can choose to shuffle the deck to randomize what cards show up by clicking this icon in the bottom right. To check the deck options, click the gear icon to see what can be configured. You can sort your cards to focus on ones you need more review on, you can choose to study only the starred cards, and you can answer with the definition or show the definition and answer with the prompt. All buttons have tooltips to describe what it does. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Simple, clean, and intuitive. For Quizlet, I rate its user experience and learning curve a 5 out of 5. Now let's talk about Flashcard Lab's user experience and learning curve. Flashcard Lab is the most popular flashcard app that works with Google Sheets. As long as you're familiar with Google Sheets and or spreadsheet programs, this will be very easy for you to pick up. The content of your flashcards are stored in the spreadsheet like so. To start studying, click the Start Reviewing button on the sidebar. Select the sheet contents you want to review and click Start Reviewing. The user interface is very similar to Quizlet as it is simple and clean. You can use the buttons at the bottom to navigate and flip the card. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard as the tooltips show. You can also click the card itself to flip it and show the other side. By default, the flashcards are shuffled and are randomized differently each time they are reviewed. 
Similar to a Quizlet's starred function, you can add a specific card to a sheet labeled Forgotten to study later. Once you've completed the deck, you can see a summary of the cards you had difficulty with. Going back to the sidebar, click the gear icon to show the settings for Flashcard Lab. Here, you can set a few things. The first setting is to set whether the back of the card should be shown as a prompt, or the front of the card should be shown as a prompt. The next setting is to turn on or off spaced repetition study. Fear not, this spaced repetition study system is not the same as Anki's and is a simpler version of it. You only need to set the time intervals measured in days to configure the spaced repetition system. There are no other complicated inputs. As for rating Flashcard Lab's user experience and learning curve, it is definitely better than Anki. And although close, not quite as simple and intuitive as Quizlet. For this reason, I rate Flashcard Lab a 4 out of 5 in this aspect. Moving on to Cram.com. Cram is also very similar to Quizlet in terms of ease of use. It's perfect for straightforward flashcard study. It has the same navigation and card flipping controls as Quizlet. It has a shuffle mode. You can toggle between showing the front of the card or the back of the card first, and overall feels very similar to Quizlet. The only criticism I have of Cram is that the flashcard display is kind of small, and they're slightly more cluttered than I would like. So I'm rating Cram's user experience and learning curve a 4 out of 5. Brainscape has a good user experience and a slight learning curve due to its unique learning system. Here is a dashboard where you manage your learning. Here are some example vocabulary sets. Click on a single set to start studying. When the review starts, there is a sidebar that tracks your progress. Brainscape employs its own proprietary spaced repetition study system that's different from both Anki and Flashcard Lab. After testing yourself on the first flashcard, you can click Reveal Answer to continue. You are presented with five options ranging from one to five. One being you did not know the answer to this card at all, and five being you perfectly knew the answer. Selecting an option will record that difficulty in the sidebar on the left. As you continue testing, Brainscape will continue to track your progress. Now here's a slight nitpick. At 10 cards, a checkpoint pop-up stops me and requires me to then click a button to continue with the next 10 cards. This is a hiccup in the reviewing process and to remove it, I have to pay for the pro version of this app. Continuing on, I review the next 10 cards. You can see that card I previously said was difficult was repeated here and counts as the next 10 cards. Shortly thereafter, another checkpoint is reached. Now, this is a little annoying, but if I purchase the pro version, I should be able to turn this off, and ideally this would be the end of my study session. There are some things I didn't show here to mention about Brainscape. For example, editing flashcards can happen in multiple places with differently designed pop-up interfaces. This inconsistency, though minor, steepens the learning curve. Also, there's a page that shows how your flashcards will look on a mobile phone, which seems unnecessary. It may sound nitpicky, but for these reasons, I would give Brainscape a slight disadvantage compared to Cram and Flashcard Lab in the user experience department, rating it at 3.5 out of 5. Next, let's talk about how well each app can be customized to fit your study style and needs. As I mentioned before, the learning curve for Anki is pretty steep, but this contributes to how much customization can be done to suit your study needs. Once you learn how to use it effectively, it can be a very powerful study tool. You can design your flashcards exactly how you want by using HTML and CSS, lots of inbuilt formatting, adding images and audio, and more. You can literally get as creative as you want on how you display your information in your flashcards. Secondly, you can enhance the Anki app by adding add-ons. Anki is supported by a thriving developer community that has extended its core capabilities. You can find add-ons that do simple things like change button colors, all the way to showing you interesting statistics about your study habits, adding text-to-speech capabilities, adding markdown and latex support, and so much more. The Spaced Repetition Study System is the most customizable out of all the apps that exist out there. You can tailor the time intervals to work with your specific study schedule and tweak it to your own ability to memorize knowledge. As far as customization goes, there is no app that has the extensive capability that Anki does. 
It is easily a 5 out of 5 in this aspect. The customization capabilities of Quizlet, Flashcard Lab, and Brainscape are all pretty similar. You can add media like images and audio, and there are some limited ways to format and display information on the flashcards. For example, in Flashcard Lab, there are default input fields to add text for synonyms and mnemonics so that when you're studying, you can give yourself hints or make connections to other cards. Or you can change these input fields to whatever you like and they will show up on the flashcards in certain locations. With Brainscape, one really cool UI element is the Advanced Cards Editor. It is a user-friendly template that allows you to add footnotes, clarifiers, and other sections to your card. Compared to Anki, these three are definitely not as customizable, and if Anki is the gold standard with 5 stars, Quizlet, Flashcard Lab, and Brainscape are rated a 3 out of 5. Lastly, Cram has the least customization out of the five apps, both from a card design standpoint as well as settings. For this reason, I'm rating it a 2.5 out of 5. Let's talk briefly about each app's capability for Space Repetition Study. Again, Space Repetition Study, or SRS, is a way of studying that involves reviewing information at varying time intervals to maximize retention. There are many ways to go about doing this, but the general idea is to show you cards that are difficult more frequently and cards that you know very well less frequently. Out of the five apps, only three of them have SRS capabilities. The first one is Anki that runs on the Super Memo 2 algorithm or SM2. This is also the most customizable and complicated system. Flashcard Lab employs a modified Leitner system which is much simpler than Anki, but the trade-off is it's less tweakable. Basically, with Flashcard Lab system, you graduate cards to be shown less and less based on time intervals you set measured in days. If you forget the answer to a card, then it puts it back to the most frequently reviewed time interval. Lastly, Brainscape has its own proprietary SRS system. Finally, let's talk about price. Anki is free for the desktop version, but it costs $24.99 for the iOS app. This is a one-time payment. Quizlet has a freemium model and charges for an unlimited bank of study material, no ads, and custom formatting and media for flashcards. For the plus version, it is either $3.74 per month paid annually or $9.99 per month paid monthly. Flashcard Lab has a freemium model as well. For the premium version, Flashcard Lab charges a one-time fee for reviewing and printing unlimited flashcards, ad-free use of the mobile app, unlimited space repetition study, and the ability to reverse review flashcards. This one-time fee is $10.99. Cram is free to use with ads. In order to remove ads and add color, bulleted lists, and font styles in the flashcards, you will have to pay $5 per month. Finally, Brainscape offers pro features of studying unlimited flashcards, adding media, advanced editor use, import and export CSV files, and more for $7.99 per month, billed annually, or $19.99 per month, billed monthly. Let's wrap up with a table that summarizes everything. Every app has its benefits and drawbacks. It's up to you to decide what is important to you and what you are willing to pay for. I will say if you are willing to learn Anki, it is probably the best system for long-term learning. If you don't want to spend the time and effort to read the Anki documentation, Quizlet is the way to go. For the best bang for your buck, Flashcard Lab is the absolute best choice for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and I would greatly appreciate it if you give Flashcard Lab a try. I'll leave all the links and important information in the description below. Thanks for watching.